Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. In this video, we will look at the eruptive and post-eruptive movements of the teeth. The eruptive phase starts with the completion of the crown and the initiation of root of the tooth. This phase has an intraosseous compartment where movement occurs within the jaw bones and an extraosseous compartment where movement occurs outside of the bone once the tooth shows up into the oral cavity so that teeth can reach functional occlusion. Four major events occur during eruptive movements. The root of the tooth is formed up to some extent and needs space where it can keep developing hence the tooth keeps moving upwards to reach the oral mucosa. The reduced enamel epithelium covering the tooth's enamel fuses with the oral epithelium and then gives rise to a thin epithelium layer overlying the erupting crown. The crown tip is the first part of the tooth that penetrates through the fused epithelial layer allowing the entrance of the enamel into the oral cavity. The occlusal or incisal movement of the erupting tooth within the oral cavity continues until it makes clinical contact with the opposing tooth. This phenomenon is known as active eruption. The apical shift of the attachment or the junctional epithelium will then take place to expose the tooth crown fully, known as the passive eruption of the tooth. If we look into the molecular events briefly during the eruptive phase, teeth movements occur through a highly regulated process. A continuous signaling mechanism exists between the reduced enamel epithelium that covers the tooth crown and the dental follicular cells. A balance between bone resorption at the top of the tooth and bone deposition at its bottom as the tooth moves away from the bone into the oral cavity is maintained. The circulating monocytes are recruited into the area of bone resorption. Cells of the enamel organ produce cytokines that stimulate the conversion of monocytes into the osteoclasts. As the bone is resorbed from the top of the tooth, the dental follicle comes in contact with the connective tissue of the overlying mucosa which causes the reduced enamel epithelium to secrete proteolytic enzymes that assist in the breakdown of connective tissue and establish a pathway for tooth eruption. Since the overlying connective tissue is lost in this process, hence no bleeding can be observed. On the other hand, in the basal part of the dental follicle, osteoblastic activity ensues to fill up the empty space left behind as the tooth moves upwards towards the oral cavity. After teeth have fully emerged into the oral cavity, ongoing adjustments and shifts occur to maintain alignment and to accommodate for growing jaws. Post-eruptive tooth movements start when the tooth is in functional occlusion. As the jaw bones increase in width and height, teeth adjust themselves to accommodate the growing jaws. The readjustment of the teeth occurs in response to bone deposition in the alveolar crest height and the floor of the socket. Functional and parafunctional activities of the teeth can cause occlusal wear and a reduction in the height of the teeth. To re-establish occlusion, teeth move to compensate for occlusal wear. Compensation primarily occurs by continuous deposition of cementum around the apex of the tooth as the tooth keeps moving upwards. During chewing movements, teeth rub against each other on the sides of the contact points resulting in interproximal wear. The tiny spaces that is left behind through this interproximal wear is filled by the mesial or forward movement of the teeth towards the midline. Thus, interproximal contact is re-established. The term for this mesial or forward movement of the teeth is called mesial drifting. The forces that cause this mesial drift are multifactorial and include an anterior component of occlusal force, contraction of the transseptal ligament between teeth and soft tissue pressure. Let's look into each one of them. The occlusal force has got two components, one of which is the anterior or horizontal component. The teeth in the jaws are not straight. Instead, they are mostly inclined mesially and that's the reason that during clenching or mastication forces, teeth always tend to move towards the mesial. However, Studies show that in the absence of occlusal forces, when opposing teeth are removed, 
the mesial migration of the teeth is slowed down. This indicates the presence of some other force from the PDL. The contraction of transeptal fibers, which is one of the PDL fibers, is considered an important factor in the mesial drifting of teeth. The transeptal fibers of the PDL that run between adjacent teeth across the alveolar process draw neighboring teeth together and maintain contact between them. The fibers are capable of adaptation and hence remodels by collagen phagocytosis within the ligament. Studies show that grinding away proximal contacts provide room for a tooth to move, after which teeth move through the contraction of these fibers and re-establish interproximal contacts. An example highlighting the critical role of transeptal periodontal ligament fibers in maintaining tooth stability can be observed in long-term orthodontic treatment where if retainers are not used, there will be a risk of teeth relapsing back to their original positions due to incomplete remodeling of the PDL fibers. By using retainers, the teeth are stabilized until the PDL fibers completely remodel, ensuring long-term stability and alignment. Soft tissue pressures from the cheeks and tongue may also push teeth in a mesial direction. However, studies show that when soft tissue pressures are not there, for example in patients with Noma or Tantramoris, where they have lost a major part of the soft tissue of the face, teeth instead of drifting mesially tends to drift outwards towards the site where there is no soft tissue pressure. This suggests that soft tissue pressure, although does not play a major role in the mesial drift of the teeth, but it does for sure influence and maintain tooth position. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.